So I grew up in a, a non-denominational house or the Pentecostal side. I really didn't read the Bible that much. I knew of Jesus, but I really didn't have that relationship. I attended the church, but it was more like, check, I did it. So it's just like, all right, I've got fire insurance. I'm not gonna go to hell because I'm going to church and I know enough to be a good person. Post-education, working in Denver, Colorado, and the company that I worked for said, all right, we're closing the Denver office. Brad, would you like a transfer letter or would you like a, a severance package? I went ahead and took the transfer. My family and I moved to uh, the Woodlands, Texas. Here for about th three and a half years, and the company that I was with was acquired, so I found myself unemployed. I started to stress out. A lot of anxiety and uh, depression started to soak in. We were just trying to figure out what to do. My anxiety was so bad, I started to pace. I was starting to get like these shocks. Up to that time, I was a social drinker, so I drank in a chewed tobacco quite often. And with the, uh, the worry, anxiety um, that was starting to come in, I started to do that more frequently. So it came to the point of my wife had to have a lot of conversations with the kids of dad's working through this. We just got to pray for him. And I didn't want to let them down, but you get so self-absorbed just trying to figure out, I want the best for him, but I don't know what to do. I don't know the next step to take. The anxiety got so bad, it was like uh, the feeling you get when you get pulled over by a cop. It's that, that gut-wrenching feel day in and day out. At that time is when we started to seek out other resources. I was uh, admitted into a mental facility. So when I went there, they, they drugged me up on a couple different medications, which really didn't help out much. Uh, my cognitive skills went down. I really couldn't remember what was going on after being there for eight days. So I was let go. My uh, wife's mom pointed us to Dr. Neil Nedley with his depression and anxiety recovery program. So they sent us some DVDs and um, got me on a plant-based diet and a strenuous workout program. Then in October, I flew to Weimar and was in his 10-day depression and recovery program, which that there helped out. The anxiety was still there, but it was starting to subside because I was starting to reframe my thoughts and starting to incorporate some of the things I learned through Dr. Nedley's program. He gave me these study guides from Amazing Facts and said, uh, just read these when you get back home. And that's where we got introduced to Amazing Facts. So we started to go through the guides and learn about the Sabbath and the other topics. We were able to study together as a family. So some of the biblical truths went from my head to my heart. And then that's when the chain started. It just wasn't me studying it. It was collectively us as a family because I just don't want to be changed. I want the whole family to be changed. On top of the study guides, I also downloaded uh, the app of Amazing Facts. So we started to watch uh, a lot of videos. And us as a family, we all got baptized and my wife and my son got rebaptized. But if it wasn't for the resources from Amazing Facts, I would not be the father, I would not be the husband that I am now. My name is Brad. I wanna thank you for changing my life.